Hi everyone, uh, I'm Megan here at the Ashland Public Library and welcome to another parent craft video um, where I'm going to show you just a few small things that you can do um, and make for your kids that they'll have a lot of fun playing with and that actually will help teach them some basic, some basic things even if they don't realize it's not a game. Um, and I thought since, you know, we just recently had the Easter holiday, so you'll be able to find these eggs on clearance, or possibly you have a bunch already in your house. Um, there's a fun matching game that you can do with these, and all you need are your plastic eggs and a Sharpie. So what we're going to do is on the top part of an egg, we're going to write the capital letter. And on the bottom part, we're going to write the lowercase letter. So we'll do a great big A and a little A. Or you could do your capitals on the bottom and the littles on the top. But yeah, just go through, go through the whole alphabet. Um, or you could just do letters if you have a preschooler, if they are struggling with certain letters. Um, I know Q was always a hard one because they're very different. So once you have all of your letters, you are going to, to take your eggs apart. And then you want to just, you can put them in a bin or a bowl or leftover baskets, but just mix them up and then have your kiddos try to find the matching letters and put them together. It's a great early literacy game, um, teaches you know letter awareness. You can also do this with colors, take them apart and have them match colors. And it also helps with some of those fine motor skills. Um, if your little ones are too little to be worrying about the alphabet, I have a different game that you can play with them using these plastic eggs as well. So you'll need your eggs and a plastic tote bin, some of your ladles or a big spoon and oh, um, some tape, um, painter's tape, masking tape, they work really well. And you put your eggs in the bin. And we are going to just make a crisscross of tape. There we go. So, so I have crisscrossed the tape across the top. I've got my eggs in the bottom. And then all you need to do is give your kiddo a big ladle. And the idea of the game is to try and scoop out an egg. And they can put it in their basket. They can just set it aside. Um, you can, if you want to make it into a competitive game, you can see who can get the most. Um, if you have more than one kid, um, you can pick a color of egg and see who can get all of their color out first. Uh, but if they're real little, they will just have so much fun 
taking the eggs out of here and putting them into here. Oh. All right, so those are my egg games. All right, this next idea is um, great for your kids that are in preschool or getting ready to go into kindergarten or even starting the first grade, depending on where they're at, maybe even older. Um, everyone is a little bit different, but it is a lacing card to learn to tie your shoes. So I took a piece of cardboard, and as you can see, I just sketched out um, a basic shoe, and then I cut out the holes. Um, with the cardboard, to cut them out, I did use an X-Acto knife. If you don't have this, and you don't want to try to poke holes with a pair of scissors, if you do a quick internet search for um, shoe lacing cards, um, you can find something like this. I print it off um, and then just, yeah, use your, you can use your scissors a lot easier to get those holes cut out. So, uh, your kiddos can help you decorate the shoes if they want. That's a fun thing. And then you're just going to take um, ribbon or yarn, um, or even an old pair of shoelaces. So if you're just starting to teach and learn shoe tying, you might have to lace these up. Um, but if your kids have already kind of started with that, then you can definitely let them practice lacing shoes really good fine fine motor skill practice especially depending on how small you made the holes all right and there we have our shoe with our laces And then you can teach them, show them how to tie your shoes. I was always taught that you made a bunny ear. And then this was another bunny. And it could run around. Oh, there's its burrow. And pull it through. Oh, another bunny ear. Pull them tight. Um, I know other people have songs that they've learned to tie their shoes. Those are always fun. Um, I never remember them because I learned with bunny ears. Um, but yeah, and they can practice as much as they want. And once they get good on the board, they can practice on their shoes, your shoes, sibling shoes. So yeah, that's a little fun one. And then the last thing that I wanted to show you is a really fun, messy play. Um, we're going to make oobleck, uh, which sounds complicated. It is actually quite easy. So you'll need a bowl. This is water, um, a spoon to mix up with, and then I have these already pre-measured, but this is corn regular cornstarch. And I'm going to put it in a bowl. Um, there's no real measurements to this. I had these pre-measured for a science project, um, and it was left over. So my cornstarch. And then you're going to just add a little bit of water at a time and mix it. You want all of the cornstarch to be damp. You don't want to have any powder left. Uh, but you don't want it to be real soupy. It's going to be thick. Uh, you can also throw in uh, some oops, liquid food coloring. 
and make this a nice color if you want it to. As you're mixing your cornstarch and your water, you will notice that it starts to get really hard to mix, and it's almost like it's solid, and then it flows like a liquid. That is the point that we want to be at, and that is our oobleck. If you have older kids, definitely let them mix this up. Um, you can let your littlest ones touch it as long as there's no um, corn allergies or corn sensitivities. It is taste safe. I definitely wouldn't want them to eat a bunch of it. Um, but yeah, let me scoop some. So this is our oobleck. And it is what is known as a non-Newtonian fluid. And so what that means is when it is at rest and it doesn't have any anything pressing on it, it will act like a liquid. But as soon as you put pressure, I don't know if that will show, but if you make this, you'll feel it. As soon as you squeeze it or press it, it'll get solid. And then as soon as you stop, it will just drip and flow. Um, it is a lot of fun to play with. It makes a, a great big mess. Um, so yeah, if you're inside, definitely um, put down some, you know, plastic tablecloths, something easy to clean up. Um, but it is just cornstarch and water, so it's not gonna stain anything unless you put the food coloring in it. I know some food colorings will stain. So yeah, don't, don't be wearing your nice clothes. Um, but yeah, um, if you wanted to have a story time to go along with making your oobleck, um, Bartholomew and the Oobleck by Dr. Seuss is a great choice. That is a fun book and a fun read. Um, I hope that you guys will try out at least some of these, especially the oobleck. Um, I learned this in school and I have made it with any kid that I've had a chance to and they all seem to love it. So thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you'll join us for more of our story times and our kid videos. Um, I'm gonna go clean up and I will see you in the next video. Bye.